John 4 and 24. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can place your Bibles down. Let's, let's talk to him right now, God. We need you. We want to revere you. We want to worship you. We need an understanding, an impartation, a revelation so that we can fulfill those requirements, God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Open our hearts, open our minds, and reveal yourself to us greater than ever before because we know that your word declares we must worship you in spirit and in truth. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. I'm going to go quickly into this, and I'll give you a caveat. We may go to next Wednesday. And the wonderful thing about this message is it applies to everybody in the room. Because when you don't set yourself to purposely worship and do, everybody say, do the will of God, you set yourself up for misplaced affections. When you do that, you may, because of a lack of understanding, focus on earthly, worldly things and pursuits because worship is truly an attribute of the saved and redeemed. Amen. Listen, worship involves not just your singing and church attendance. When you worship God according to his word, it's a lifestyle. Because mm, if you're different when you're not here, then when you're here, something's not right. If you can speak one way out of here, then what you're doing, oh, did you not just sing, you, I believe what you say, God? Okay, well, let's get into his word. Let's, let's, let's look at this. Let's look at Matthew 24 and 38. It tells us because we want to worship God because he's God and because of what? I need him to save me. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. I like that because it denotes that we need to pay attention to Noah. Okay, what is the greatest common denominator between those that were saved and those that were lost? Yeah, okay. Those involved in the building of the ark were saved, and those that were not were lost. Pretty clear. Mm-hmm. Your focus on activities is your worship. All right, parents, come on. We have an old saying, do as I say, not as I do. What is that, what is that really saying? Look, I'm a hypocrite, but don't follow. Worship is not an accident. I lost my head. No, you didn't. You did what you wanted to do. Worship is on purpose. Hey, ladies, when he says he worships you, that means there ain't nobody else. Worship is found in obedience. Worship is found in submission. All words that today are kind of, well, we want to make them subjective. Well, God says they're not. You'll know them by their, what you produce. Well, I know my heart. You know, what you, your heart, I can see your heart. Look what you've been doing. Don't believe the lie, believe the truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Worship is found in sacrifice. Revelations chapter 4, verses 10 and 11 says, the four and 20 elders fell down before him that sat on the throne. Look, folks, this is heaven. And worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure 
they are and were created. This is a scene from heaven after the rapture of the church. The 24 elders are representative of the church. They're in heaven. They fall down and worship the Lord. When we get to heaven, there's not going to be anyone standing around feeling like they're out of place because they don't know how to worship. No one's going to be in heaven by mistake. Mm. Worship is a reaction, result, and response of a believer. If you reap what you sow, you serve what you worship. Now listen, you, if you feel comfortable in here on, you think you're good in here on, you're in trouble. So let me just give you that. Hey, it's not going to be comfortable in here. Psalms 35 and 28 says, And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. We have an enemy. And Satan has counterfeited so many things. You may like the fact that you get a knockoff wallet or purse at a discounted price and makes you look like there's something because you save a couple of bucks, but that don't work when it comes to your soul. The knockoff is going to knock you off. Trust me, okay? And Satan is, has, has tried to infiltrate and force a worldly prideful mindset in the church. They worship and praise, demonstrative worship and praise, and an altar is, is, is not wanted or needed. In fact, if you look at churches today, very few churches have these in, their, in them anymore. Very few people want to come and literally get on their knees and bow before God today. Very few people want to lift their hands and worship and be just, well, you don't need to do that. Where'd that idea come from? If they're doing it in heaven, you see, well, what did he say about the churches in the last days? I'm glad you asked. Uh, if you look, and, and most of today's churches are just like the church of Laodiceans that made God sick in Revelation 13. and 14. He's talking about the last days, what church is going to be like. Listen, listen, listen to what he says here. He gets kind of serious, and he makes some statements here that they may not make you comfortable. Are you hearing me? And under the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, these things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. Come on, you sit there. I'm okay. I don't need to worship. I don't need to stand. I don't, I don't need to really get demonstrative in here. God knows my heart. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, I'm going to vomit you. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not. You got everything, but you don't think you need anything. This is what today's church sounds and looks like today. They don't really need to worship. We really don't need God to cleanse us from sin. We don't need baptism. We don't need to receive the Holy Ghost. We don't. I don't even need to be at church. I'll just sit at home on the couch and watch online. I don't need a pastor. I don't need a man of God. I don't need church fellowship. Where's all this coming from? Satan has done a good job at doing what he does. Thou knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. We live in a world that doesn't mind being stripped down and showing body parts and men dressing like women and women dressing like men. And Oh, wait, that's what his word says. You like what he says. We, we sang the song. So you were all standing on your feet. That's wonderful. This is what he says. Are we okay with this? Are you, I'd, I'd rather be told the truth now than when it was too late. Um, are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. My uh, iPad took me back to the beginning, so I got to find my clock. Amen. Praise, just give me a second, I'm right there. Because I want to read it to you. I counsel thee by of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. 
and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, listen, I rebuke and chasten. You ever just feel like, man, he's in my living room talking right at me right now. That's the love of God. And he gives us, he gives us a, a little sentence here to end this. Be zealous, therefore. Get you zealous back for God. Some of you can't wait to get up to jump on Facebook. So, some of you can't wait to get up and go do whatever. And you come dragging your backside into church going, oh. Let's be honest. These are real feelings. These, these are misplaced affections. That's why he tells us, set your, make a purpose of setting your effect. All right, let me get real. All, every one of you men walking around with this lovely wife you got. And there, I say it like this. There's always a hussy with some tacos in every, every corner. I love my wife. I'm thankful. And so sometimes my eyes need to be reminded of my commitment. I know none of y'all face that. Now we got a bunch of lying dogs up in here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hey, girls, don't, don't act like you're immune. Sometimes I'll wonder why you're dressing like that if you got a husband. If those are his, cover that mess up. That's what the Bible says. The Bible, Bible says get covered at, that's, a, that, that's sacred. It's sacred. Isn't it not? You, I know, I know, I know. This is not comfortable, but it's Christian. You zealous, therefore, oh God, help me get this right. Turn my eyes back to the Lord. Turn my eyes back to my spouse. Turn my eyes back to, I'm worshiping God here. I'm a child of the God. I don't act like that. Does he not in his Bible refer to people, you're of your father the devil? Well, we need to, uh, uh, I'm a child of the king. I'm going to live like that. I'm going to live like I'm royalty, like I'm going to a palace in heaven that's being prepared. That's worship. It's time for us to make that serious stand and get back to having power, the power of God working in our lives and the church. Psalms 95, will come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Well, that's hard to find today. It's hard to find people thankful to come into his presence. You got so many other things you want to do and be. You're more thankful to be around your family and your children. You're more thankful to be at your job. You're more thankful to be at the bank checking your bottom line. You, you, you can You have to understand the enemy of our souls wants our eyes on gold and silver and the things of this life that you buy, you buy that feeling. Well, don't even Toyota knew this back in the 70s. Oh, what a feeling, Toyota. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not telling a lie. I'm telling the truth. You know, I've got to walk in shoe leather just like you or, or pleather, whatever you're wearing tonight. Mm -hmm. And make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Some of us, the only time we get excited is, oh, man, I got this or I got that. But you come into church, you couldn't get excited if they jolted you with some electricity. Misplaced, misplaced affections. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it. The hands, his hands form the dry land. Oh, come let us worship and bow down. You don't really mean to bow down, do you? Yeah. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is God. You don't have to feel like it. He is, I do. He is, I do. It's not a book of suggestions. I want to be saved. Now, you don't have to listen as God is so God. He's like, you don't have to. But only those that made me God are coming with me. 
Now, you're not going to be in con you're not going to be comfortable with all this because some of it's going to be walking around in your mindset and your heart and it's going to cause people to make decisions. Who are you going to serve? Choose you this day. Now you could choose yourself and walk out of here and think you got the world by the tail until you breathe your last breath and then boom. We are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand today if you will hear his voice. We get upset about this stuff. No, listen, the last thing you want to tell somebody in the middle of a fight when they're wrong is they're wrong. Or, or try to tell him to calm down. But look what he look look at his next harden not your heart. As in the day of provocation, and he's looking at Israel. He's looking at what they did back in Exodus 17. Mm -hmm. As in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me. Proved me, saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation. Notice he, he's grieved with people. And said, it is a people that do err in their heart. And they have not known my ways unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Wow. Wow. This is important because it's easily done where we begin to put more faith and confidence and worship and praise into things and stuff and ourselves. It it's, becomes idolatry more than we, we put more effort and commitment into those things than God. And circumstances say, well, where's God in this and where's God in that? We, we forget that he let us know his word. It's going to rain on the just and the unjust. What, you don't think you get no rainy days? Especially you've been around God a little while. He, he, you know, and you let that fervency or that passion for God kind of wear kind of thin. He says in Revelation, and he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of waters of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving... Fearful and unbelieving. Look who, they're, look who they're grouped with. And the abominable. And murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters. And all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and with brimstone, which is a second death. What? To turn our back on God. To have come this far and to turn around and put faith in other things. To put effort and worship. Listen, I've been around long enough. I, I've got children. I know what it is to struggle to want to do everything for your child, and you put them before God. There's a struggle there, and it's real. It's real. It's a real fight, but God lets us know, hey, I'm first. Trust me, you ain't Jesus. You can't out Jesus, Jesus. He says in Matthew 24, and because iniquity shall abound, which is lawlessness, or you won't be governed, the Bible does govern us. It's the same concept that we have in the world where you have stop signs and stop lights and lines and rules. There's a governing that has to take place. You'd be the first one to scream that someone's going 150 past you on the freeway and cause that. Who do they think they are? The same person you think you are when you disobey this. The love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Guess what, folks? You're going to have the opportunity to get cold right in your seat. It's easy to say, well, I'll just show up. Maybe. Tell your mate, oh, I'll just show up home. I don't really want to be here, but I got something better I like down the road. Listen, folks, the more experience we've had of the power of God and the goodness of God, the greater is our sin if we distrust or question or turn our back on him. 
Paul deals with this issue in Romans 1, 21, 25, because that, when they knew God, knew God, how many say, believe you know God and you've been walking and talking with him and having a relationship? Anybody here? Yeah, I know that he ain't, none of you raising your hands now because of context. Guess what? It don't matter. God knows. God knows. You don't have, you, you don't have to acknowledge me. I'm fine with that. I'm way past needing that. I don't do this for reaction. Uh, I do this. I do this for him. Yeah. See, I read about the apostles and the prophets and how they were treated. I'm cool. I'm cool. Because if if you can know God and not glorify Him as God, I don't expect you to want to acknowledge me either. I'm cool with that. How I many of you parents know your kids that turn? You did all you did for them, and they walk out on you or mistreat you. You raised that little fool and you changed their diaper and you fed them and you are, they turn around and turn their back on you, treat you like garbage. Any parent here ever experienced that? Well, what would you think you were doing to God? I don't need a pastor and I, I, don't, I don't need a Sunday school and I don't need a brother and I don't need a sister. I don't need to listen to mom and I don't need to listen. They're imperfect. Because that when they knew God, they glorify him not as God, neither were thankful, but became. This is key. Because that means they used to. It's a dangerous thing for all of us because they became, they lost it somewhere, vain in their imaginations, in their thoughts. They used to know God. They, so the scary thing is, I guarantee you, I was preaching sometime in the past when you were doing everything for God. You'd have raised your hands when I asked that question. But now, oh. Not on this subject. Their imaginations, their thoughts, and their foolish heart was darkened, blind, can't see, misplaced affections. You know, they got worldly friends and worldly pursuits, and they were once real godly people. They became weary and worn and maybe even bitter towards God because they feel that we can sit in judgment of God's choices and say, I don't think I, you should have done it that way, God. And they got upset at the church, and their heart gets dark, or they go blind, and they get a condition which is basically idolatry. I'd rather spend more time with my family than the presence of the Lord. I have more fun with my son or my daughter or my grandbabies, and I'd rather do this. I just tolerate church, and pretty soon habits and hobbies garner greater affection than the king of kings and the creator of your soul. And so the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, I got this. I don't need a pastor. I don't need the Bible. I don't need to know what it says. You say I, I'm strong when I'm weak, and you say, oh, we love all that part, but when it gets down to real, the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they become fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like an uncorruptible man. And so you, you create your own God. You do it. Maybe the joker you're looking at in the mirror. Because he talks about even you can make it into birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Well, they did that. They made the golden calf, which none of us would worship a golden calf, but we got people today to worship Having a house, having a car, having the right boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, yeah. wife, child, look, just the look, the image, or, or just the thought that they think people look at them a certain way could be the very thing they worship. Is that the truth? Yeah. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, which is what that is, through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, yeah. who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. It's not over because the next verse says, for this cause. I, I see y'all. It's cool. Gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature. I said all that, and I read all that, and I, I, man, I'd love to jump and shout like everything's cool and say, hey, it's your birthday, let's have a party. But if humanity, if you and I do not purpose in our heart to only praise and worship God, we will praise and worship lesser things. Yeah. 
If we don't focus on what we're going to do, things and people and stuff, occupation and culture will garner our affections. Listen, going, just going to church is not worship. Psalms 32 and says, and we will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. This verse makes it clear that going to church is not worship. Notice it says they went to the tabernacle. Then it says, we, we will worship at his, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna bow, we're gonna, we're gonna go at his footstool. Why? It denotes and implies, I'm going to bow myself. I'm gonna put myself in the proper perspective to God. Does that make sense? In Luke 8, there's, there's a response to a situation of a, a man that had been tormented. He'd been a mess, and he's in the extreme side of culture. And they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus, and they found that man. They found that out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. And in his right mind, they were afraid. You want to scare people? Come in out of the world and start living for God and find yourself bowing and sitting at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to tell you what's said to me by, by, by my family when I started serving God. We liked it better when you were a drug dealer. Exact words spoken to me. When I was the guy running around in my car with a sawed-off shotgun with my best friend who had been a, just got out of prison for murder, we liked you better like that. Don't you tell me the devil ain't after you. Oh, I, I know some of y'all think you're bad, but you don't understand some of the bad that God has saved. I know you think you're hard, or you think you know this or know that, and that old wimpy, geeky, dorky-looking pastor don't understand. You have no idea what bad is. You don't. You want to know what bad is? Someone smart enough to walk in and bow before the creator of the universe. Someone willing to find their seat. Someone else. I don't care what you all think. I'll get on my face at this altar. I'll fall on my face. Because I know what power is. I know what that is. Well, you think because you put some clothes on that make you look good. Man, that ain't nothing. There's a world out there to make you wet yourself in those clothes. You have an image, and that's it. But he's God. It used to be years ago when I come into the church that people would come forward under conviction to the altar. They'd run to the altars. They'd be on their knees before God. In fact, I hear a lot of the elders talk about the good old days. They're still here. I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. Where y'all at? I remember when the altar invitation was given, you almost had to hurry up, but you didn't get a spot. Ain't nothing changed. You did, but God got it. The worshipers are still finding their place. Hey, Brother Bruce, they're still showing up at 5 o'clock in the morning to come and pray at the church. There's people still showing up at all hours to come pray at this church. There's people still knocking doors and coming out of the world and handing out blankets and teaching Bible study and loving and not bitter and hard because the church wasn't perfect. Because they understand I'm going to worship God and only Him shall thou serve. I've witnessed, I've seen it, I've, I've watched it over the past 35 years or so. The devil's been able to come in and counterfeit the whole reason of having an altar at the church. In fact, most churches have taken, even, even Pentecostal apostolic churches have taken them out. Sad, I could take them out and most of you wouldn't even miss them. Why? People aren't at church to worship. You didn't come here to worship tonight. I hope someone will say that to me. I hope someone will push back on that. Most of today's church has been turned into a glee club. You're here because you think you have a title or a position or an obligation. You didn't come to worship. Come on, I dare someone to say, I came to worship. I 
how many are still with me? How many are still with me when I call a fast? I'll be honest with you. I appreciate all that. But that's just praise until you do it. Oh. It's a country club, a little self-help, socializing place. Instead of worshiping God and getting free from the consequences of sin. That's what the church is still for. You want the Holy Ghost to fall in here? Quit making this about feeling good. Oh, that's right. Make it about being right before God. Mm. Now, I'll be honest. I'll give honor where honor's due. The devil's done a good job. Mm -hmm. I think he even realized he can't really stop the church. So over the years, he's just garnered a bunch of charismatic carnal leaders and allowed them and manipulated them as they became in charge of churches and they, 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 they stopped the church from being a church and turned them to gatherings of just hang out, be men pleasers. But I still say that this is a place of yes. worship, salvation, and we're still going to deal with sin here. Yes. That I still got to repent and be zealous for God and church, to realize that. <clears throat> See, there's an, there, there's, like, there's an ebb and flow like the pendulum of a, of a clock, and every now and then it, it gets aligned where it needs to be. And every time I pray, it gets me back aligned where I need prayer, helps me get to that place of praise and worship. See, 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 I know some of y'all, you think you're praising for God to do things, but you stop praying for God to do things in you. Worshippers pray for God to still do some things in them because they recognize how far above of them that he is. Matthew 16, I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail again. I, I still believe that today. I still believe there's going to be some people full of the Holy Ghost, filling altars, falling on their faces, seeking his will in his face. I look around, I watch who's first in the altar. I watch those of you who struggle with your pride and you stand back and you don't know where you belong because you've omitted finding that first place you belong and that's at the feet of Jesus. He said in Matthew 21, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you made it a, a den of thieves. Satan's tactics have not changed. Why don't we talk to God right now? Jesus, speak to my heart. I, I dare you right now, lift up your hands, talk to God, say, God, I need you to speak to my heart. If I'm not where I need to be, if I'm not aligned with you scripturally, if I'm not aligned with you by truth and, and by the Spirit, God, Lord, help me right now. Help this church, help me right now, God. I want to worship you. I want to find myself in your presence, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on now, think about that for a minute. Think about that for a minute. Hallelujah. I know that's uncomfortable. I know, oh, just bring something to make me feel good. Just bring something to let me go home and think everything's all right. Now my family and I, we're good just like we are. That's not my call. That's his. That's not my place. It's his. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not done. I'm going to finish this. You're going to stick with me. Stay with me. That, 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 way, that way when you fight, when you really get there, it ain't just being a stirring. You'll change. It ain't just a little, oh, okay, that was good, and you leave, and nothing changes at home, and nothing changes, and you're okay with them little fibs and white lies and, and fudging the truth. And Listen, Psalms 100 is called the Psalm of Praise. 
Listen, listen, listen. Now, Brother Christian beats us all at this just because he's louder than louder than the rest of us. But the Bible says, make a joyful noise and look, all ye lands. Listen, listen. Serve the Lord with gladness. Hold up, hold up. I get it. I, I know you, I know. When's the last time you've really been glad? When's the last time you've been glad? Oh, man, this church is getting away what I want to do. I'm trying to hang out with my family. I, I got things to do. I, I got another place to be. I know. Listen, listen, listen. We do. We did it tonight. We started right. Come before his presence with singing. Thank you, Sister Erica. Thank you, praise team. You led us in the will of God for singing. You know they didn't do that tonight? Do you know they were here last night? Do you know they're here on Saturdays? Now, let me say something. Hold on. Hold, this is good. Let me say, I'm going to tell you something first. I'm going to qualify. This is a good church. I'll stand up and I'll knock anybody out. Says anybody, anybody. There's good people here. Put it this way. I'm giving my life for this church. You better believe I care about you and I love you. But let me tell you what I know. There's a devil that still wants to stop you. He wants to shortchange you. He wants you to think your grandbabies are more important than he is. He wants you to make you think that God can't protect your son, even if he's a cop. I want you to get more than an emotional high. I want you to get your mind, your heart, and your, and your knowledge and truth wrapped around this. That we just don't come into Souls Harbor and play church. The next verse, the psalmist says, he uses the word no. And I know right now, with some of the situations you face, you struggle with the no. I don't know if he's going to answer. I don't know if he's going to. You have to allow God to answer the way he wants. He may let that situation die. He may not allow that job to come. He may allow your health to fail. He, but it simply means know ye that the Lord, he is God. This is, this is how you worship. You don't get in the car on your way home, sir, and have to pacify your wife's unbelief. You need to trust. Know that he's God. And I won't accept that in here. Hello? Are you hearing me, church? Don't you let even somebody bring and crack the door to let the enemy get in there for doubt. The doubting and unbelieving will be lost with the liars. And if you better hear it. Some of you have left this no outside a long time, and you see, you think you're critiquing me. Well, you better get off that arrogant throne right now and find yourself on your face before God. God will deal with me. You try to critique me because you're a diversion from someone be critiquing you. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Oh, that's a revelation for some of you. You ain't no self-made man in here. That's the biggest lie Satan's passed on to humanity. Tell it. Tell 
You're like, you're like that guy. This is the Babylon that I built. God used that man for his own purpose. Go read his story. You better hope you don't find yourself in a mess. We are his people. The sheep of his pasture. So now you got an understanding. Because this, we always quote this verse, but we miss what precedes it. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Listen, listen, listen. I'm going to keep teaching. I need you to be seated. In Scripture, it's, look, we can get to the practical side of this in just a minute. But listen, I, I, as pastor, you have to graduate this class, this portion. You have to get the made-up mind. He's God. Every time I come in here, it's going to be with thanksgiving. He's God. There's no more question. He's God. Listen, you can backslide and still know he's God. I hope if you do, you do know that. Because then you know where to go. You know where to come. Are you hearing me? Well, don't worry about that. Look up front. In Scripture, praise is generally presented as boisterous, joyful, and uninhibited. God invites all kinds from his creation. Jesus said if these don't praise God, even the stones will cry out. You're all sitting there, yeah, right. Well, you know, you can ask him if you get there. I said if. When the Bible mentions worship, the tone changes. It moves and it shifts. And it's different from when talking of praise. When we read verses like nine, Psalms 96 and 9, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now, there's no versions to holiness. Holiness is a God thing. It ain't yours. It ain't mine. It's his. You got to be holy according to what he calls holy. 95 and 6 says, come let us worship and bow down. Worship is coupled with the act of bowing, kneeling, it's in, in, in the form of humility and contrition. I'm, That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. It is through true worship that we invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us. When you worship, you see, I ain't heard from God in a long time. If you're not going to worship him, why would he speak to you? When you worship, you, you invite him to convict you. Oh, that's right. I, I, I remember something. God's never convicted me of that. Well, let me explain something. God don't have to convict yes, you of anything that's written in his word. That's right. That's right. It'll, when you worship, it is that Holy Spirit that comforts you. Listen, when we realign our priorities with God and acknowledge him as God, then We make the Lord the rightful owner of our lives through our worship. We realign our heart. We realign our mind. And we adjust our ways and priorities. Even Paul said, that which I don't want to do, that I do. In other words, I, gotta get, I still have to align myself with the will of God. How we get to the place where we don't think we have to align ourselves with God, yet Paul, the great apostle, yes. listen, I still got to do this every day. Yes. If you haven't been realigning yourself, if you haven't felt God, if there's not been a relationship or something transpiring, then let me tell you something. Worship. Yes. Yes. Come on. Worship. Yes. How am I going to know how my wife likes things if I don't care about what she likes? When I when I when we got I gave myself to her, she gave herself to me, all of a sudden we create an environment of 
I want to please you, you want to please me. Now, I know some of you got it the other way, and some of you got this backwards thing that you just think it's just your chica until you want another chica. Well, you see the out of that. I want to show you something, because let me tell you how important the church is. I'm going to show you something in Psalm 73, and I, I haven't preached this message in a long time, but maybe it's due. It's the Psalm of Asaph, and it's this guy who talks about, he says, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. God ain't going to be good if you don't have a clean heart. If you got a corrupt heart, you'll give a rip about God. If we're having great services and things are going on and, and you cared about God, you'd be finding, hey, pastor, what can I do? Or if you got an unclean heart, you'd be coming to me and complaining about everything that I'm doing or think I need to change something. You're always going to be full of this or full of that instead of you're, you're moving with God. You're moving with what's going on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish. The moment you're envious at the world or you're bitter at the church, let me tell you something. You got to. You got something, you got trouble. Oh, their church this or their church that. Let me tell you something. When you get right with God, you could be happening in prison, praising God. You could be going to the lion's den and be cool. You go to a fiery furnace and be all right. You can get stoned, drug out of the city and left for dead and get go up, go back at why? He's God. I got to make up mine. But I, I, I've been through enough stuff, and I talked about it this Sunday. I was bitter at God for something. I didn't realize something showed me. And my worship was lacking because I had this hindered place. I had a hurt, a wound, and I had to get that right with God. This guy was in trouble. He, he, was, he, he was in a mess. He well nigh slipped. He was about to give up. In verse 17, he did something. It says, until I went to the sanctuary of God. Then understood I their end. Everybody looks like they're doing good till you see the back of the book and read the story. Hey, I mean, that guy out there living high on the hall, doing all that mistreating people and just being a total jerk. He looks like he's having a great time because he's got to pay the price for it with his soul. Let me say this. Praise is intertwined with thanksgiving. Now, I can't tell you how much it means that no matter what you're going through, to thank God. Because you can't get to worship until you get to thankfulness. Even if you've lost somebody. Even if you didn't get the job. Even if you've done everything you can. And your health is because worship is intertwined with surrender. I'm going to say it again. Praise is intertwined with thanksgiving. Worship is intertwined with surrender. Listen, because if you truly know how to please him, you will seek his will in your life. Praise is intertwined with thanksgiving and worship is intertwined with surrender. It is impossible to worship God and something else at the same time. You call, you're making God a liar if you think. You need to understand what worship is. The devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou Serve. Those physical acts of worship are associated with the, the bowing, the kneeling, lifting of hands. They create and they demonstrate the attitude of humility required for real worship. Remember the little boy getting in trouble? Got told to sit down. Teacher would be rating him for disrupting the class, and he turned around. I'm sitting down on the outside, but on the inside, I'm standing up. That's all funny till you realize it's you spiritually. I ain't submitting to him. I'm not going to love her. 
I'm not going to be obedient to this pastor. I don't agree with him. You hear what I'm saying? That's why worship is so hardly seen today because Satan has effectively emboldened humanity in its pride to base it on feeling good instead of worshiping God. Don't you step on my toes? Who do you think you are? Exodus 34 and 8, and Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshiped. First Kings 18, 42, so Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went to the top of Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Nehemiah 8 and 6, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, amen and amen, with lifting up of their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And Luke 24, yeah, New Testament, and it came to pass as they were much perplexed, where about, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth they said unto are you hear what I'm hear what's happening here Acts 9 you need to get this one and as they journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined right about him light from heaven the Bible says and he fell to the earth but when you study that out and go read when he talks about it the Bible says that he prostrated he purposely put himself on the ground and prostrated himself. He humbled himself. He found that physical way to demonstrate, okay, you're, you're God, I'm not. I'm running around killing people like I'm God, but I've come face to face, truth to truth, spirit to spirit. Okay, wait a minute. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice singing him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He descended from a wrecked position to a prostrate position and he fell crushed. He knew he had to change his position and posture in this presence. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know you don't want these in. Let's get the altars out. I don't have to physically do. He said, who art thou, Lord? said, I am Jesus, who now persecutes hard for thee to kick against the friends. That physical involvement, that, that when, when the music started playing and you started watching certain people come forward, there's an element of connectedness that it's beyond, I'm not at a concert, I'm in church. Yeah. I'm not here on obligation, I'm here to worship. Yeah. It, it punctuates that I'm, I'm, I'm here and my heart is rebe being revealed by my actions. Yeah. The Bible tells us, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be base, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted, because like faith without works is dead. Worship without your whole heart humbled is not worship. Hmm. Let's stand. The difference between praise and worship can be described, and I need you to listen to me as I, as I try to close. Listen to this. This is important. Slight word changes, but the meaning is tremendous. Praise is about God, and worship is to God. Praise is opening up. Worship is entering in. Praise is boldly declaring God's existence. Worship is humbling, bowing in the presence of a holy God. Praise applauds what God has done. Worship means exalting the one who is. Worship is an attitude of the heart. You can go through the outward motions of praise and not be worshiping. God sees the heart. He desires and deserves sincere, heartfelt praise and real worship. Psalms 119 says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him the whole heart. Jesus makes a statement in Matthew 15. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me because their actions
Some of this is painful, but it's truthful. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing center of soul and spirit and the joints of the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the tents of the heart. Listen, Cain, not all offering will be accepted. Cain's offering was rejected. And it shows us obedience is a matter of the heart. Obedience is directly connected to worship. God does not forcibly, listen to me tonight, intrude or enthrone himself in your life. Oh, you, you need to hear me, hear that, that's key. You praise in his presence and you worship him into the throne of your life. You come in here with thanksgiving and praise, you do all that, but it's worship that sets him in the throne. You can go do all you want to all day long and come in here and praise. But until you worship, he will not sit on the throne of your life. You can worship him into the high places of authority in your life where only one throne exists. Psalms 22 and 3. But you are holy and enthroned on the praises of Israel until you build with worship and praise until you're honest when you come in here into the house of God and in your life when you walk home I'm not putting that in my body I'm not doing that with myself I am not putting my time, effort and resource into that I'm not going to defile myself because I've got the throne of God in my life it's been a long time since I shared this Glory, come here. You're going to be Jesus for a minute. Don't try to outact me. Just stand by me and do what I ask. I decided I'd give my life to Jesus. I'm going to live for God now. So I'm going on outreach and I'm knocking on doors and doing all these wonderful things. And all of a sudden in my life, I'm like, man, there's this fine looking girl I like. Now, it's just that yours could be whatever it is, but for the sake of visual, all of a sudden, there's this worldly chick, and I get enamored with her, and I start calling her. That's not too bad. That's okay. But Jesus says, no, nah, come on, you need to get, you need to, if I'm going to be on your throne, you, you can't be entertaining those things. You, I said, well, Jesus, hang on, man, hang on. She's fine, man. Come, come on, Jesus. Tug of my heart next Sunday morning. Pull me. No, come on. I love you, Steve. I will bring the right one. If you'll become the right one, I'll bring you the Then the next thing you know, she calls me up. And she's inviting me to this one. And I thought, you know what, Jesus? Yeah, I'm going to bring you up here. I've had enough. Oh, come on. Leave me alone. I want what I want, and I'm going to do what I want to do. And I go and get whatever it is, and then throw this on my life because I've just put Jesus back on the cross. You can do it with stuff. You can do it with things. Whatever it is, he's got to be first or he's last. Now, I know this ain't comfortable with our flesh. But I promise you, your spirit is screaming. Your soul shout. Yes. If you only knew how much God loved you and did what He didn't go to Calvary because it was easy. He went there because we couldn't do it. Let me show you one last thing. Maybe not the best one, but it's what I got. Remember the, the 10 lepers? They came to Jesus. And they said, as he entered into a certain vision, met him 10 men of lepers, which stood afar off. Some of you are standing far off right now. Let me show you. Let me show you how you get close. They lifted up the voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he said unto them, 
Go you show yourselves to the priest. See, there's a man of God going to be involved. I'm telling you, just God's plan. Now you have to understand, they all met Jesus and Jesus ministered to them. And they went by the rules, so they went to get a man of God in life. But this, this one of them, when he saw that he was healed, you see, God will touch you. He'll bless you. He loves you. He's done so much for humanity, you, you can't tell it all. He turned back and with a loud voice, you see, something happens when you worship. You can't be quiet. Ask Paul and Silas. Ask Saul on the way. Ask. And the Bible says, with a loud voice, he glorified God. Listen to what he did. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. There's that thanksgiving to enter in. The Bible says, and he was a Samaritan. You know what Jesus said? Were there not ten? You can't tell me he doesn't see thankfulness and praise. He doesn't see how people, re he doesn't see how you physically respond to his presence. Now, it, we don't know who was there. Jesus was never by himself. They were surrounded by people. All of a sudden, he said, where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. He knows who allows him to sit on the throne of their life. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. So many people who come to church are like the nine. Let me just come get what I want. I'm out. Let me just come here, just punch my time card and go do what I want, spend my money and spend my time and spend my, and I don't believe this and I don't like that. And you once were on fire and zealous for God, now you just. But this one said, you know what? I'm not just coming. I'm going to come give thanks. I'm giving my life to you. You cleanse me from sin and leprosy. I give my life to your will. And, your... and he bowed down and he worshiped and he was made whole.